Frequent Miler on the Air starts now. Today's main event, Hyatt. They came out swinging with three overlapping promotions. What are the other guys going to do? Marriott, Hilton, IHG? We'll talk about that soon. Let's get into first the giant mailbag. All right. I'm going to drag it out. There you go. All right. All right. Today's mail comes from Dodd. This was too good. This just came in recently. I had to throw away the previous piece of mail that I had queued up because oh. this is great. Oh, so, and I have not looked at any. If it was, if it was something that okay. I was copying, I haven't looked at anything the last few Yeah, years. Yeah, I would have thought you would have seen this one because this was a comment on one of your posts. Oh, okay. This was, this was your post uh, about the HSBC <laughs> $600 bank account bonus. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Yes. All right. And... Uh, which, which I have to admit, I saw a couple of the first few comments come in on that, but I actually haven't been able to keep up the last few days. So we'll talk okay. more about well, why not. Well, this is go ahead. just the most recent. And, okay. And uh, from Dodd. Dodd says, right. I just called today. Here's how it went. HSBC. How did, how did you hear of the offer? Me. Your website. HSBC. You didn't see it in a blog post? Me. <laughs> yes, I did. HSBC. Was the blog written by Nick Reyes? <laughs> Me. Ha ha, yes. HSBC. Okay. We've been getting a lot of activity because of it. Me. Is that good or bad? <laughs> HSBC. It's great. We're just hoping a lot of these, these new customers stick around. So there you go. Well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> your, post, That's hilarious. your post is having some uh, some effect on at least one company. Oh, oh my goodness, that is so funny. So and and you know, people all the time we talk about whether or not the banks are reading what we say and blah blah blah. And HSBC is like the last bank in the world that I would expect has been reading Frequent Miler, right? I mean, like we when have we ever written anything about HSBC before? But. Um, right. <laughs> but, but but apparently apparently some people decide i mean it was, it's an awesome deal if it works but you know the thing is i i haven't ever dealt with it before and it does seem like people have run into some complication with it although that is an encouraging sign if that's the conversation and the way it went down today then okay at least they've seen the post and they understand right. you know that people are signing up looking to take advantage of it and they get their chance to keep them as customers or not you know yeah you know it's free advertising for them right basically. right so right you know so they're happy and uh and I think it's a good point as long as they stick around because if they read enough on our site, they probably gathered that maybe a lot of our readers are just going to hit it and run. <laughs> right. But, right. Uh, you know, they, they have a chance to prove that they're a good uh, bank to bank with. And, and so some people probably will stick around. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I when I opened the account, I didn't expect to stick around with HSBC. I just expected. I mean, I thought it was a great bonus. You know, for when I signed up, it was a seven hundred dollar bonus, but paid over six months, and, and you had to have direct deposit each month. Blah blah blah. And uh, and so I figured, all right, well, it was seven hundred dollars for me, seven hundred for my wife, fourteen hundred dollars, and kind of free money. That seemed like a great deal to me. Uh, so I was happy to sign up for it, but I had no intention of keeping it long term. However. It's actually worked out to be pretty good. So I've been pretty happy with it. I, I might keep them. Uh, so I, I'm pleasantly surprised. And, you know, maybe yeah. some people, yeah. hopefully some readers will end up feeling the same way because it is a great deal they're offering. So, right. But that's funny. That's hilarious. I, I, I love it. That, yeah, I love, I I love, love that, he, that he, he spelled it out like a dialogue. <laughs> that's yeah. great. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> so thanks, Dodd, for, Thank for you, that Dad. contribution. Thank you. Yes. All yes, right. Yes. So you, can you queue up our next segment? All right. So the next segment then should be, what crazy thing did City do this week? That's right. So this week, not a crazy thing at all, but noteworthy. Noteworthy thing. Noteworthy. What noteworthy thing did City do this week? There we go. City has tapped a woman named Jane Frazier to be the first ever CEO of a major U.S. bank. So they're first ever CEO yeah, out with the old and in with the new. And um, yeah, so so my main concern about that, I think that's great. Uh, my main concern is, does this mean they're going to stop doing crazy things and we're going to have to look <laughs> for a different segment? So. So, to all right. Determine there. Let, let me let me flash a, a little bit of ignorance here. So, if there was no CEO of any of the major banks, like how is the leadership set up? Who's oh, in charge? It's the first female CEO. First CEO I, I, I heard first CEO, and I was like, the, the first CEO. <laughs> I, I left out okay. an important piece that's, of that, that didn't that's I? A, that's a key piece. That really that is really a key makes piece. A total different. I was like, what, what do you mean the first CEO? All right. Oh, so gosh. everybody, just back up in your okay. minds and insert female into into first that female CEO. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very good. 
Well, that I mean, yeah, that's exciting. Except, except if she stops the crazy things. So, right, uh, right. so if you're so if you're hopefully. listening, if you're listening, Simi, which we know you are from past experience, and we know HSBC listens in closely. So, uh, so City, if you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> don't stop doing the crazy stuff. We no, love it. No. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So, time for the next segment: mattress running the numbers. Right. This one now. I would have, we would have done Hyatt, except that Hyatt's the main event. So pick something else, kind of interesting. Uh, Wyndham. So what, what Wyndham's doing is they're, they have this vacation club, which is like a timeshare thing. So they've got their vacation club properties all over. Um, a bunch of them during a set period of time, you can book two nights. So this is like, you know, probably like a condo like thing, you know, washer and dryer, kitchen, all that kind of stuff. You book two nights for only 7,500 points total. Wow. So what's the catch? Pretty good deal, right? Yeah, I mean, that, only, sounds, that sounds like a great deal. Yeah, yeah. the only catch is you got to sit through one of those timeshare presentations. Ah. And yeah, so, so the, the fear for, for anyone, you know, a little worried about COVID is that they might not be holding these things outdoors. They might be in cramped little rooms with a lot of people. Sit a little table across from some person who talks to people all day long. Right. Right. Yeah. So, you know, so there's that, but, um, but aside from that, I mean, that is a really nice deal. And, uh, and also if you're looking to, (laughs) it's kind of funny because if you're worried about COVID, I mean, having a condo like thing is probably what you want because then you could have meals there, you you know, you, You don't. You can enjoy the resort without really going out to restaurants and other things that you might be worried about. But, um, <laughs> but there is the timeshare presentation. So, so when when do you have to stay by? Uh, I don't. I don't know off the top of my head. But I. But I think it was Sometime. like. Uh, it was. It was early. Like I think it was like maybe early November or something oh, like that. So very soon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think? Is I mean, is this a good deal? Is this worth going after? I mean, you, you mentioned some of the positives I, there. Yeah. It's very few I, think, I, I mean, I think if you have points and you're looking for a vacation in one of the areas that are included, which they have a whole list. So I'm, you know, I don't know off the top of my head what they are, but there were, uh, they tended to be more in the, in warmer weather areas. So there were a bunch in Florida and Texas um, I think there was South Carolina, um, you know, so anyway, if, if, if you want to go on vacation to one of those places, I think it's a great deal. I mean, yes, you've got to sit through a timeshare presentation, but if you think about often those timeshare deals are like, you have to pay $200, um, you know, in addition to sitting through the thing, right, right. this is only, uh, 7,500 points. So that's, right. that's a good you know, if you think about that trade-off, that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, and, and Wyndham points, you know, if you're generous, you're going to value them at about a penny each. So it's about $75 worth of points. It's Capital right. One transfer partner. So it costs you 10,000 Capital One points. So $100 worth of Capital One points, a little bit more maybe than that. Uh, for two nights, I mean, that doesn't sound like a terrible deal. But I'm going to go on the opposite side and say, All right. not, not a great deal. No? Not a great deal. Because, I mean, come on now. Stephen, our own Stephen Pepper wrote the Wyndham Timeshare Survival Guide, right? So right. If, if you remember back to that post, wildly popular frequent miler post, and I'm not even being facetious about that. No. <laughs> like it, it has continued to be wildly popular year after year. People are looking at this post. And if you that remember the, the details, story. yes, it is. So if you remember the details of the Wyndham Timeshare Survival Guide uh, post, get your no face on, right? He right. was offered one of two options initially. So his two options were either 45,000 Wyndham points, or a free seven night stay certificate with a bunch of restrictions. So, you know, something right, like this, right. Blah, blah, blah. And so he, he get either of those okay. for, for attending the presentation. He said he wanted both. And they said, essentially, if you want both, it's going to cost you a hundred bucks or 150 bucks, maybe something like that. So I think right. he ended up paying a hundred or $150 to get both 45,000 Wyndham points and a seven night stay. Now, Probably, you know, again, he could have had the 45,000 points for free. So he could have had enough points for like three mid-tier Wyndham stay, you know, three nights yeah, yeah. for free. So they could have paid him to go to the presentation. Why are you going right. to pay them? If right. they're willing to pay you, why are you going to pay them? At, at a time when nobody, nobody, not many people are traveling, I got to imagine that they could do better than that, right? Like, I mean, shouldn't they be encouraging you to come to that timeshare presentation and try to get you to spend your money? I think that that having to pay anything right now to go to a timeshare presentation in a COVID market with people traveling as little as they are, 
I think that seems like a bad deal. I think that I think I think that's a great point. Uh, you've convinced me. <laughs> All right, but if if anyone but if it does, wasn't COVID, maybe. if anyone does take it up, uh, go find that that post and read it before going, so that yes. you know how to get out of there, how how to survive the uh, timeshare presentation. Please do because you don't, and, and especially if you're the kind of person that gets influenced easily at all. Definitely read that post so that you understand the different levels that they're going to go through to try to reel you in after you say no the first eight times. And then hopefully, if you're the kind of person who's easily influenced, you're going to read all that and say, you know what, maybe I shouldn't go to this. <laughs> because you don't, you don't want to get right. reeled into that. Okay. Right. There you go. Nick right. just double saved you 7,500 Wyndham points. Hopefully. All right. All right. <laughs> cool. So then, all right. does Time that bring the main us event? to the main event? The main event, Hyatt. Now, I know that Hyatt has something big going on, but I got to admit... I, I really haven't read like anything about it. I took a very, very, very quick glance at, at, at maybe like the email about it today or something like that. Uh, and I say something like that. And, and my, my excuse here, I should bring it up now. So, so let me just interrupt for a second. Okay. I've noticed that you haven't right. been posting this week. <laughs> Right. And you've basically been slacking off all week totally. long. What's, what, what is going on? Totally slacking off. Just taking a break. <laughs> I figured, you know what, you and Stephen Pepper can pick up the slack for a week, see what it's like being Nick Reyes. Um. <laughs> we, we get mail from HSBC all the time. <laughs> Glad I'm keeping you busy with that. So, so for anybody who hasn't noticed along the way that I've been talking about how oh, I was you know, expecting a baby, expecting a baby, well, I was expecting a baby. And sure enough, that baby came. So, uh, so I'm out on paternity leave right now, which is why you haven't seen anything from me this week. And I, I slept like, like I told Greg before this, like in 20 to 40 minute increments last night. So, <laughs> so I've been, uh, been away from the game totally. I've been trying to adjust to life with a newborn and a two and a half year old, which I know many people do it. People do it all the time. So I know it can be done but I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> so it will take me a few more days, I think, before I have a, a good handle on that. So we're, we're making it through. And you know what? I mean, we're having a lot of fun. My goodness, we're lucky. We're fortunate. Fantastic. Uh, beautiful child. Healthy. Mom was good. Delivery was awesome. Everything was great. Totally in love, but definitely struggling with the day-to-day, -day, like just, you know, A, B, C from sun up to sundown. So I have not looked at Frequent Miler at all this week. And that's the first time I haven't looked at frequent miler for this amount of time in a, like probably as long as I've worked for Greg, even when I've been on vacation, I'm usually checking and looking this week, not so much. So, so you wouldn't say two and a half years ago, there was a period of time when you stopped looking at frequent miler for a little while. Well, you know, no, because so yes, yeah, so, so Greg's alluding to the fact that, that my son was born a couple of years ago and I was out on paternity leave then, right? My first son rather, we have two sons now. So my first son was born about two and a half years ago and definitely, you know, took some paternity leave. I was, was out for a little bit, but you know, anybody who has had one child at the newborn stage, you know, they sleep like 17 hours a day, right? So the newborn stage is like, quote unquote, the easy time. And so there was a lot of downtime that first like two or three mm -hmm. weeks. So I feel like I was still looking at frequent miler, maybe not, you know, as often, of course, as, as usual, but I was still looking at it because he's asleep in my arms and looking at my right. phone, flipping through. Right. But when you got to pay attention to both now, one who's like alive, alert, awake, and enthusiastic, and one who you're just trying to keep alive and, and get to that awake and enthusiastic stage, uh, then there's just less time for scrolling, it seems. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's understandable. Less this week. And I, I love what you said about Labor Day weekend on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I said that, you know, so we had the baby over the weekend, born on Labor Day weekend. And so I said, you know, Labor Day weekend will have an entirely different meaning for us from, from, from here on out. So <laughs> forever be changed <laughs> with Labor Day weekend. Means. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and I, I'm, sure, I'm sure I'm channeling all our listeners by s sending you a big congratulations. Thank you. So, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, but enough of all that. Okay, it's enough of all that. It's time to get back to work. <laughs> back to Hyatt. Back to Hyatt here. So, back to Hyatt anyway. So, so, so my all right, point so in all of that was you need to tell me what's going on because right, I don't really cause, know. Cause you're, you're doing you're, something. You're not going to pull your weight in this conversation right. is what you're saying. Well, no, I okay. mean, I'm definitely going to be happy to criticize or agree or disagree, <laughs> but you got to tell me what it is that I'm agreeing or yep. disagreeing with first. Okay. Right? You get, and right. you get a fresh live reaction out of me on this one. All right. Mm. So there's, there's uh, two parts. So you remember the promotion where Hyatt is rebating – Award stays. I so do. they're giving 15% back of the points for uh, people without the Hyatt card or 25% back if you have the Hyatt card. And you have to stay uh, by October 8th for that, right? They've extended it to January 4th. 
That's exciting. So that's, that's exciting by itself. And I'm going to tell you in a minute why I'm personally super excited by it. But then they also added a brand new promotion, uh, which has two distinct parts to it. Uh, but this brand new p- promotion goes October 1st to January 4th. So now there's a complete overlap between these two promotions starting okay. October 1st. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the new promo first part is um, either triple or quadruple points per dollar earned on paid stays. Mm. So uh, what that works out like five, you normally earn normally earn five. So, so a base level, a base member without any status would be getting 15 or 20. So there's Mm. the 20, the quadruple uh, comes only if you're a Hyatt card member and only for select resorts, but they haven't put out the list yet of what, what those are. So let's just hone in on the, I guess the triple is, Mm -hmm. is a definite and that's for everybody. Uh, Explorers with triple get, um, you know, um, 16 points per dollar. If you pay with your Hyatt card, you always get four points per dollar. So an Explorist gets 20 points per dollar. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a nice rebate on Hyatt, on paid Hyatt stays, huh? It's a really nice rebate. And then at the, at the Forex level, um, it, it goes up to 25 with that combination of using the Hyatt card. Um, so at the, at the top end, these two, the rebate, at the top end and then this points per dollar at the top end are remarkably similar. Like, so right. with the 25% points rebate, if you, if you spend a hundred points, you get 25 back with the cash, with the um, points, uh, 25 points per dollar, you spend a dollar, you get 25 points back. And so it's almost equating spending higher points with spending pennies, you know, right. as far as those two promos go Very interesting. Um, at the top end of each one. Mm-hmm. So uh, the other piece of this new promo is bonus elite nights. So real quick for anyone who might not know what, what is an elite night? It's, it's when you spend a night at a, at a hotel, they record that and they, and it gets you towards elite status so that you could get more perks on future stays. And, and uh, with Hyatt, you also get, um, uh, they have these, 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 um, I'm blanking what the name of it is, but oh, uh, milestone rewards where at like 20 nights and 30 nights and 40 nights earned, these are elite nights earned, you, uh, you get various perks. You get like free uh, lounge access or free night stay, things like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, th- so th- here's how the promo works. This is, I'm surprised they went with this because you really have to understand this uh, elite night stuff to, to get it. Um, however many night you earn for your stay, whether it's a paid stay or an award stay um, during the promotion period, you'll get that many again in 2021. What? Okay. So, so, okay. So, so you stay in a night this year, you're going to get credit for that night this year and credit for that night next year. And next year. Right. Right. So, I mean, to be extreme, no one would do this, but if you, if you did 60 nights during the promotion period this year, you would start next year as globalist, as globalist for the following, for the following year. You know? year yeah. yeah, yeah. It's essentially kind of like extending your globalist status beyond it, another year. It's it's very much sure. like, um, well, it, it's sort of like well, like exactly. rolling over elite nights. Yeah, but not really because it's only rolling over the ones earned during this period. It's also right. not really because you might remember Miles the promo Smith. goes into twenty twenty one briefly up right. to January fourth. So any any stays that credit to twenty twenty one. You're getting double elite nights because you're getting oh. the base ones plus right. the bonus ones. Right. Um, so there's a play there. I'm trying to, uh, I've been uh, chatting back and forth with Hyatt, a Hyatt rep, because I'm trying to understand what happens on a long stay that ends like January 4th. So if you started like December right. 15th and ends January 4th, w- where do all those elite nights go? So I, I will have either already written about this by the time people listen to it, or I'll post next week what the answer oh, is so to interesting. it. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you can imagine some um, some opportunities to right. uh, try to get ahead on elite status there. So now um, I'm, I'm going to jump ahead of you and cut you off and probably totally derail your train of thought. But but so those, those nights that are going to count again in 2021 are they going to count towards milestone? rewards again so like you get your club lounge yeah access yep. stuff at 20 you do tw- so if you do 20 nights right now you get yourself a club cert i guess right and then you get another you get it this year and again next, next year. year yep okay yep yep all right 
Interesting. Uh, yeah, I verified with that, that with them. Also, free night certificates will work too to get you an elite night now and, and later. Nice. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's all awesome. And the nice thing is that part of the new promotion um, overlaps with the old promotion, with the extended reward stay promotion. So you book a, a award stay, you're getting up to 25% points back, plus you're getting these bonus elite nights <sighs> that go into next year. Okay. Now, that's the kind of promo I expected to see somebody come right. out. That's, that's what I was thinking when all this stuff came out. I was like, finally, we're seeing the right. stuff we predicted earlier on in the, in right. the COVID mess, right? Right. So at least from a major player, like we saw that choice promo, which we thought that was like an early one, but it was very, very specific. But right. um, yeah, this is the first broad-based stay almost anywhere type of promo that um, that's big numbers, not just... Not just little like uh, Steven's right. post about this Hyatt promo actually made fun of Marriott. He's like, <laughs> we're all in the corner laughing at Marriott. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. twenty five hundred per stay. It doesn't matter. How many uh, nights. Oh, right, right, right. Something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> kind of puts that to shame, huh? <laughs> it yeah. does. It does. So, uh, yeah. So, so that's that's a. I think the smoking hot combination. And I'm going to throw in another one. Okay. The the Miraval promo. The buy one get one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, book, you stay one night, you get the next night free or stay two nights, get two nights free kind of thing. Um, that overlaps as well. So that goes until the end of December. So um, if, you, if you book a Miraval award stay um, and you have a Hyatt credit card, you get, you, know, you get your four or six, whatever, even number of nights for half price. And then you get 25% of that back and then all those nights are going to count for elite status both this year and next year. Yeah, all those things whoo, wrapping up together. That's, that's a pretty crazy combination. Yeah. So, so is it mattress run worthy? I mean, is that like, are you, you going to get out there and just all of a sudden book a bunch of stays? I mean, you're not going to book a bunch of Miraval stays at the drop of a hat, right? I mean, that's <laughs> something you, you wanted not, to do. Not at a drop of a hat, but um, I'm going to tell you a personal story, which okay. is that I already have booked four nights at Miraval, Austin, and four nights at Miraval, uh, Arizona. I'd, bu- I'd book this before. Greg was like, Nick's out on paternity leave. I'm going to need a break. This is done. <laughs> 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 you go to all the Miravals. <laughs> That's right. Um, and so, uh, but I booked them uh, because of the buy one, get one offer. The, now, the first one, I, th- I knew uh, when the when the 25% rebate came out, I, I was like, woohoo, I'm going to get 25% back on that one, but not the Arizona one. Mm-hmm. Now I am because I extended the rebate. And now all of a sudden, these two four night stays uh, become eight elite nights next year towards uh, re-upping my uh, status next year. That's thanks to all terrific. these overlapping things. So no, yeah, I mean, required. it's That's, yeah. <laughs> right. And, and just to give you an idea how many, how much this is like, so the, the second Miraval stay where I'm suddenly getting 25% back, um, 32,500 points are, are going to be coming back for nothing I did, but just because they extended that promo. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's a really, win. really nice. That's huge a win. Win. Right. Yeah. Now this all assumes that I actually go through with the, both of those stays, but um, I, we I expect I will. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's really interesting. I mean, first of all, I, the, the, just the number of points you can earn back in a paid stay, that's pretty terrific for Hyatt. It is. It is. Hyatt points at least one and a half cents each. So, you know, you're looking at anywhere from 30 to 40% almost back in points on a paid stay. Right. Right. So, so it really makes it hard to figure out um, which you should do book a right. paid or a point stay, you know, cause with the, with the points rebate alone, it, it really tipped the scales for like almost any stay towards book it with points. Um, you know, and there's always, it, there's always going to be, and, and there is now, uh, a fact that if the cash rate is very high, the point rates are, are fixed. So, so it's probably going to be better to do a point stay. Um, and conversely, if the cash rate's very low, you're probably better off doing a cash stay. Um, and so that's still true. It's just that um, now it's like the stakes are higher as far as what the, what the rebates are, depending which way you go. So um, either way, though, great news that you're getting all this stuff back. And, and um, I'm wondering, like, I don't think 
that Marriott, Hilton, IHG can just sit by and say, oh, we're okay with the promos we had planned. Do you, right. I, mean, do you, I mean, now they're much, much bigger than Hyatt, so maybe they could, but I'm thinking we're going to look at, we're going to be seeing some Something thinking going on. <laughs> There's got to be. I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised that none of them have thought in this type of direction yet, because I'm right. like, this is the kind of thing you have to do to incentivize people. Because I mean, I just heard about this, right? And I'm already in my, my head here doing the math and saying, well, if we do a 30 day stay at a category <laughs> one in December, like how's that going to add up for next year? And right. So I, I, I'm certainly already thinking that kind of stuff that, you know, Marriott and IHG definitely don't have me thinking about a 30 night hotel stay in 2020. That's for sure. So, uh, right. Right. Now I, I, I have to mention one other promo Hyatt has going on is, is there work from Hyatt, um, deals. Uh, right. So WFH <laughs> instead of work from home work, work from Hyatt. Um, so they have at a, mu- a bunch of properties, um, special offers where you get, um, property credit, free breakfast, uh, various other things, um, free or discounted laundry. If you book seven night or or longer stays, um, you know, so, and the reason I'm bringing that up is I could imagine people. So this is sort of a perfect combination, right. Of, of like people now, a lot of people are in a situation where they can work from anywhere. Uh, they're working remotely anyway. So why not work, from a resort on the beach or something. Um, And so, and then you have all these overlapping promotions. So I think the idea of booking a hotel, like you were saying for 20 nights or whatever, is not as far crazy as normal. Um, Unfortunately, I looked at a couple of the rates for these things and they weren't that good. uh, Yeah, they, they were, they were higher than the, the member rate. And so, you'd have to really value all the stuff that comes with it to, to pick that. And, and when, and especially the properties that I looked at are not cheap either. So for really long stay, that would be crazy expensive. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, my point is like uh, looking at long-term Hyatt stays, I think is, is making a lot of sense. And, and um, that, you know, why Marriott and Hilton and IHG wouldn't want to be incentivizing that kind of thing as well. Right. I don't know. Right. You, I, you absolutely would think they would. So now I, I think you're already a globalist for this year, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So are you thinking about booking mattress runs to pick up easy elite nights for next year? Does that make sense? Does it make sense to book a mattress run night if you're already at globalist status now? Is there any reason to get involved in that? Um, I mean, it, it could like, so if um, I, I would do it, it, it sort of depends what the answer is to, if a, if a stay starts in December and ends in January, how many nights would I end up with for next year status, you know, next year towards status? Um, because basically you're getting, t- then you'd be getting two elite nights for every one paid night, whether paid means with points or with uh, cash. With points, with the 25% rebate, if, it, if you could find a category one, it's what, 37 uh 500 points a night, I think. So right. it's pretty cheap and you're getting two elite nights for that. Um, it might make sense to do. Plus, don't forget, you get milestone rewards. So right. even though I'm already at Globalist, um, oh, well, this would count for next year. But um, you, so you would get, uh, get different, like a free night at 30, night at 30 and, and other things at different Right, uh, I mean, levels. you get a, so, what, a free category one to four at 30 nights and then a free category one to seven at 60 nights. So, right. you know, if you were able to and pull sweet off, upgrades at 50, yeah, right, there's some good right, stuff in there. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So that, I mean, that could make sense, especially when you consider the, the points rebate and what you're saying about how, depending on how the, the nights post, if the nights post that way and what you're able to kind of double up, then, uh, then that right. certainly could be. Right. Good right. Now, all that said, I don't think it's likely I'll match this. Like, I think I'd be much more likely to try to actually engineer vacation plans around it like say okay we know we want to go somewhere it's going to be hyatt (laughs) and And, i mean cheers to hyatt's marketing team because that's exactly what they want right yeah absolutely and that's and that's where marriott and hilton and ihg are just missing the boat right now and i I feel like their promos are all kind of just they're giving some points away to those folks who are going to travel to them anyway 
there's not really an incentive to pick them over anybody else. Right. Not, not that we've seen yet. Yeah. 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 And I really expected we would see this double, triple elite night credit kind of things. Lots and lots of points. Uh, You know, Hilton's always giving you lots and lots of points. I think they probably have their double points promo going right now, but that's like what they always run. So it wasn't anything particularly special there. So, uh, and then, you know, they're, they're rolling overnights too. I think if you're over the, the threshold, uh, Hilton is, but it, it, not not the same way. So th- I think that this is a really interesting, exciting promotion. I am not anywhere near Hyatt Elite status for this year, and so I'm probably not going to get involved in this. But right, right. If I were, or if I anticipated being close to it next year, the other thing that I would take a close look at is the Hyatt Privé rates, because Hyatt Privé I've written yes. about before, and it's like Amex Fine Hotels and Resorts, but you book it through a Hyatt Privé rep and. And so you get those very similar benefits and you're going to earn your points and elite night credits. And still going to earn the, the up to 25 points per dollar on, right. on that stay. In addition to all those great perks. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Uh, thanks for reminding us about that. I right. mean, and so uh, if anyone's listening, I mean, you got to dig up that post. We'll put it in the, the, the notes of the um, podcast. Um, but Nick wrote all about uh, Hyatt Privé, how to book it and everything. Well, and it makes sense because the rate is usually about the same as whatever the member rate is. And you're getting, you know, the $100 kind of benefit, amenity benefit at most places or 75 at some of them, blah, blah, blah. You, you read all about it in the post. But the, the key is, I think right now is with paid rates really low and quite a surprising range of properties on the Hyatt Privé list. You know, you're not going to get like Hyatt places and Hyatt houses, but you do get some places where paid rates aren't always crazy. You know, I, I booked one back before the pandemic at the Grand Hyatt in New York. And it was like, I don't know, 120 bucks a night or something, which, you know, not, not so bad for all of the benefits that I got. And now with paid rates probably being even lower in a lot of places, you might find some spectacular deals in terms of the number of benefits or the benefits that you get and the number of points and the extra elite credit. So that's where I would be looking, uh, it, it, you know, apart from award stays, obviously, if you have award stays, that it makes sense. I mean, that's, that's right, 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 clear. right. Um, go. So uh, I'm going to give you, t- let's wrap this up with, yeah. um, we'll each do one prediction of what will another major chain do to retaliate. Okay. So you're going to go first. Okay. I think IHG will come back with their, uh, their gamified promo. I can't remember what they call those things. Or accelerate. Promo. Accelerate. Okay. Yeah. Where they have a bunch of different challenges, like stay in, two different holiday inns or whatever and or two different brands and you get 10,000 points and stay in these two get whatever. Um, they, they have a bunch of targeted challenges for different members. They've had that uh, accelerate promo, different versions of it. They brought up regularly. We haven't seen it for a while, I think. I haven't, no. It's um, yeah. I think since they have that whole sort of template in their pocket, like I'd expect to see that come back and hopefully more generous than that most recent couple have been. There you go. I think that's a decent prediction. And, and I was bummed as, when you said IHG, cause I was thinking I was <laughs> going to try to pick IHG and whatever they're going to do next. And, and then the accelerate promo is a, a great prediction. So I guess, I guess here's, here's my prediction. I don't know how strongly I feel about it, but, here, but here's what I, I'm going to go ahead and predict anyway. Okay. We've, we've seen Marriott tossing out a bunch of different targeted promos and some of them are really good. And some of them are really not worth anything at all. I remember in the past, Marriott used to now and then run a promo where you could stay two or three nights and get a free night certificate that was good for up to like some mid-tier category. I could see something like that, especially because the free night certificate will have a fixed expiration date. So there's going to be some built-in breakage. So it doesn't cost them as much as it might if the points, you know, just continue on in perpetuity and can get used at some very high end place. So I could see Marriott doing something like that, where you stay a certain number of nights and you get a free night certificate because that's a a less expensive promotion for them to offer probably, yet it still would incentivize people to stay at Marriott. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I I think I see them doing something like that. That's my guess. That's a good one. Okay. That's a good one. All right. So we normally move right into post roast. Right. But I I reviewed all of the posts you wrote (laughs) you wrote this week 
And I couldn't find anything bad to say about any of them. Nothing you could roast. <laughs> Nothing you could roast. Anything. That's Nothing. right. That's right. It was a flawless week for me. They were all flawless. flawless yeah. Uh, so, uh, and, and you know, of course, the other way around, I already said that I haven't read anything. So, right. uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm out of the loop. So I've got nothing to roast for Greg. It's been a terrific week for Greg too. Uh, there was something that came to mind, actually. I'm trying to remember now because there was something. I did read a quick deal and I, I got to the end and I was like, ooh, I wish there was an example of this but I can't even remember what the quick deal was. So that's a terrible post roast. So I, I, All right. Well, I let me know. real quickly roast one of my own then. Okay. Um, so um, I wrote uh, Chase Sapphire, What's Next? So this was in response to the Freedom Cards coming out with the 3X categories. The Sapphire Preferred is, is uh, old and worn out. It no longer has any attraction what are they going to do to to bring it back to life? And I proposed a slew of three X categories they should move to. Okay, and, so what, what were your slow? Just in quick review. Um, I, <laughs> okay, never I mind. Think, I think I said grocery, gas, travel, and dining. Okay. And uh, so part of the roast is that I, I think last week I told you, no, they're not going to do grocery. <laughs> so, but then in my post, I went ahead and, <laughs> and predicted grocery. Um, and then I said, all right, well, and then if Sapphire is going to do that, Sa Sapphire Preferred is going to do that, Sapphire Reserve has to go 4X for all those categories. So that's 4X. what I... Wow. That, all right. Big. And um, big. so my roast to myself is like, it's, it's just not, on the one hand, it's just not reasonable that... Chase will go that big because it'll cost them too much. Like there's no way. On the other hand, I think if you read that post when, where I explain how I got there, like the, the, uh, the conditions of, of their uh, competitors and the competitive situation plus the pressure from their own product line, it's hard not to get there. Now, I don't know about those particular categories necessarily, but uh anyway so uh i'm just leaving you with that because i felt like we had to talk about that a little bit so yeah yeah well I, you know i think that they have to do something and i think we've said that before and, and i'm excited to see what they do i will be kind of surprised if if that's you know the the route that they take but not because i think it's a bad idea just because i think they seem to have resisted going that route for quite a while I think that another possibility is that the Sapphire Reserve will add more benefits uh, instead of more points per dollar in a particular bonus yeah. category. And so that I think would be kind of interesting to see if they come up with something creative to add to that. But that doesn't really help the Sapphire Preferred because I mean, how many more benefits can you add on a card that's only $95 a year that don't start to make the Sapphire Reserve seem silly. So, right. uh, so they're, they're really kind of, they built themselves or they kind of you know, dug themselves into a little bit of a hole there and, and in terms of uh, these new great fee-free cards. And I say dug themselves into a hole. I'm glad. I'm, I'm happy to sell them a couple extra shovels real cheap if they want to be big. <laughs> That's <You know>? right. <laughs> That's right. Keep up the good work, Chase. But yeah, it's, it's a tough situation. So, yeah. So go ahead. What were you going to say? So, so uh, let me just end on, you know, what I wrote wasn't really so much predictions, even if I <laughs> described it that way before. It was really more telling Chase, here's what I think you should do. So. <laughs> so we can all hope Let, the best let's hope that. we have some influence on Chase. We know well, we that, don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, HSBC is reading. Maybe, maybe Chase is too. Maybe Chase. Too. Um, so I, I remember what it was that I was going to, so this is a small roast, small roast, but, but I'm okay. going I'm, I'm to roast it anyway, because you know what? I'm out on paternity leave and I can get away with this kind of you thing. You can do so, whatever you want. That's yeah. right. That's right. So I saw that, Greg, you posted that United added some non-stops, some extra non-stops. They added non-stops to Hawaii. So I think it was, what, Newark to Maui and Chicago to Kona or something like that, right? That's right. And, and then they also added some non-stops to India and South, South and Africa. Africa. Yeah, that's Africa. Right. There were that's a couple right. African locations. Right. Yeah. yeah, and so you mentioned in there that you know because United has uh, doesn't charge um, fuel surcharges, you, you know you might be able to book great deals with other airlines. Uh, it might be a great time to consider the A and A round the world chart for the hundred and fifteen thousand. You link to that, but I was reading it and I said, well, why didn't we include some of those content block sweet spots that show the best way to book these routes with miles since we've already got those content sweet spots to say, hey, here's the best way to get to, you know, whatever it is, Africa on miles or the best way to get to so-and-so on yeah. miles. So yeah. I think adding some of that in there would have been good because I read it and I said, ooh, those new non-stops to India 
great sweet spot for Turkish miles, 52,500 miles one way, if I remember correctly, from the US to India in business class. That's, that's pretty solid. And so on United, you wouldn't be paying any fuel surcharges, cost you 52.5 and $5.60 with Turkish. That's a pretty good deal for quite a long flight in Polaris business class. Uh, and the South Africa one, popped, what popped into my mind there, and now this, I was roasting you for not including the content blocks, but this we wouldn't have a content block for yet, but the new Aeroplan. The new Aeroplan, because I mean, Africa right. is the same price as Europe and you get a stopover if you want. Hello. Uh, so you could book that that one way to South Africa one way and then the other way, book it through Europe and get yourself a stop in Europe. So Right, right. No, v- very legitimate point. Uh, I accept that as a legitimate roast. There you go. Good job. Right. Good job for not reading. There you go. <laughs> All right, so... Do we have a question of the week? Uh, well, we don't because my question of the week was going to be about the HSBC deal because I had seen people asking about the <laughs> HSBC deal like before we went to the hospital. Right. And so I right. thought maybe there was more to be said about that. But now that I know that people are calling and HSBC is saying, oh, did you read about it in Nick Reyes's post? I don't think you probably need any... It, see, it seemed in the beginning people needed more information, like my name and state and that kind of thing. Like a number of people messaged me saying... Right. Hey, you wanted to know my name and my state. And I was going to say, you know, I'm from New York state. If you get asked that and, you know, they were asking some people for email address, et cetera, et cetera. But it doesn't sound like HSBC is asking for that anymore. So I don't think. No, these days when people call them, they're like, uh, oh yeah, Nick, uh, he's out on paternity leave right now, but uh, <laughs> we know where he lives. It's all, it's all good. <laughs> what, what'll, what'll be hilarious is when we get an HSBC rep answering the questions on the blog. Cause they're like, I don't know what this guy's doing. He hasn't answered questions in like a week here. <laughs> they start answering questions about the deal. I, I hope they do. We, we, we've had that happen before with some other uh, yeah. companies, but yeah. So yeah. we'll, we'll see. There. All right. Well then that my friends, I think brings us to the end this week. So Thank you for being out there listening with us. If you'd like to hear more about what we've been talking about, you'd like to get all of the posts and email form, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and get in, into our uh, Facebook group, et cetera, et cetera. Go to thefrequentmiler.com slash subscribe. Again, that's thefrequentmiler.com slash subscribe uh, to get on our list. Don't forget also, if you're listening in a podcast format, leave us a review, leave us a comment. Same thing goes on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, give us a like, leave a comment, all that kind of stuff helps. So thank you very much for that. And oh, also, we have been mentioning Card Talk. So if you're in need of a credit card intervention, we've been saying that we're taking volunteers for Card Talk at thefrequentmiler.com slash Card Talk. Though I will say that since I'm out on paternity leave, we are way behind on that. So we do have some stuff. Right. So, so we're trying to get Nick's first son spun up so he can do Card Talk with me. Once, once until we get he's there. ready. Yeah, right. <laughs> kind of pause there. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you guys all very much. And we That's will it. be back again next week. Bye, everybody.